friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. Today marks the end of the church year as we celebrate Reign of Christ Sunday. Next Sunday, we will begin a new year with Advent, our weeks of preparation and waiting for the miracle of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Today is also Thanksgiving Sunday, as many of us will gather at tables on Thursday to give thanks for all that we have and are in this life. Of course, because of COVID, Thanksgiving probably won't look like it has before. Our gatherings perhaps smaller, but our gratitude does not change. We continue to give thanks this week and every week of our lives for God's incredible grace, for the strength and flexibility of our parish, and for the joy that sustains us in even the most challenging of times. With the print materials, or very soon if you're watching this on video, you'll receive an Advent at Home kit to help you in your house during the coming weeks. There are a set of prayers and candles for each Sunday in Advent, a calendar of things that you could give to the food pantry, a calendar of activities of kindness for the season, and a few treats to brighten your days. My hope is that these kits help us connect during this holy season in whatever place we find ourselves, that we might know together know God's incredible love born into our world in a tiny baby in Bethlehem. As you probably know, COVID continues to be a real threat in our area and across the country. There is no county in Wisconsin where the numbers of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are decreasing. Our hospitals and medical facilities are operating at or beyond capacity, and our medical professionals are nearly overwhelmed as they work to test, treat, and care for those dealing with COVID and every other medical need. The governor recently extended the statewide mask mandate until January 19, 2021. Masks, in addition to avoiding crowds and maintaining social distancing, are the best thing we can do to help slow the surge of the virus. While there is good news from those working on vaccines, they likely won't be ready for the general population, that's us, for some time. So we need to continue to be patient and careful, taking care of our health and doing our part to care for the health of our communities. While we are continuing to have in-person worship, we do so with great caution and knowing that there isn't one answer for every person or community. That's why these materials in print and video will continue so that all of the members of our parish can worship, each of us balancing our needs for health, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, while still connecting to our community as best we are able. My friends, I pray that you will remember how amazing you are how generous and kind and faithful you have been to our parish and to each other during these challenging times. In the midst of uncertainty, when there are no clear instructions about how to live and be together, you are and continue to be simply incredible. And it is my honor to be your pastor. Let us continue to be an amazing community of Jesus' disciples who do our part, wear our masks, keep our distance and pray continually for one another to keep ourselves and our communities healthy while working to create the fullness of God's kingdom here on earth. A few parish announcements before we begin. On Sunday, December 20th, our combined virtual Christmas program will take the place of worship at all three churches and in our outreach materials as well. Children and youth from all three churches are recording their parts of the Christmas story at home. And these will all be edited together with prayers and carols. The video will also be put on DVD for those who receive print materials so they can see the program too. I'm excited about this opportunity to hear the Christmas story through the eyes and words of our children and youth and to connect all three of our churches more deeply. In addition to the program, we will be giving Christmas treat bags to all our participants. If you'd like to help out with the funds for those treats, just let me know. Jordan Chaudhry's family is once again doing a toy drive for those who receive care at Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. They want to fill up the toy closet and bring smiles to children in Jordan's memory. You can bring unwrapped toys to all three churches through the end of the year. 
and thank you for your ongoing generosity and faithfulness. Please continue to send your contributions by mail as you are able. And now we begin worship together. As we come to a time of worship, we remember that we are always in the presence of God, the God who created us, named us, and loves us completely. With all the distractions, stress, and chaos of the world around us, we come to God to be renewed, refreshed, and inspired in our lives. I invite you to take a few breaths, breathing in God's spirit of love and grace, letting it fill every part of you, allowing it to flow to the places where you worry or struggle or fear. Allow your breath and the rhythm of your heartbeat to center you, to bring your attention to God and to this time of worship. Let us pray. God of all creation, we thank you for your love for us, which guides and nurtures us each day. We thank you for this community of faith that encourages and supports us through all that life brings. During this time of worship, we pray your spirit would draw us into ever deeper relationship with you, with ourselves, and with one another. Help us that we might always be a thankful and grateful people who respond to your love with faith, gentleness, and courage. Amen. Our first hymn is in recognition of today being Christ the King Sunday. Lead On Eternal Sovereign was written in 1887 by Ernest Shirtleff for his graduation from Andover Seminary. In addition to pastoring congregational churches, he worked on relief efforts in Europe after World War I. The hymn is a reminder that whatever the world might bring, it is Jesus who is our sovereign, who leads and guides us, whose word we follow. It can be found in our New Century Hymnal at number 573. And before I start the video, my apologies, there has been some difficulty with the music videos the last couple of weeks, but I think, I hope and pray that I've got that figured out for this week. So do let me know if you have any trouble with it. And now here, Lead On Eternal Sovereign. Trusting in God's grace and mercy, we come together to confess our sins, 
knowing that none of us completely followed in Jesus's footsteps this week, and knowing that if we honestly come to God, we will be received, forgiven, and inspired to live more fully as Jesus's disciples. Let us pray together. God of generosity and love, you have given us so much to be thankful for, but we confess we get caught up in our lives and forget our vision narrows, and we cannot see what you are doing in the world. Our hearts close, and we cannot see how you are at work in our lives. We take too much for granted, and we take too many people's presence for granted as well. Help us and forgive us. Correct our vision that we might see you in the face of our friends, our enemies, and in our own faces. Open our hearts that we might be grateful, thankful people who share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. In God's grace and through our faith in Jesus, we are forgiven and freed to new life. Go and live as forgiven and forgiving people. Thanks be to God. So it's Thanksgiving week, and I thought, Maybe before we all sit down to tables full of food, we should think about some of the things we're grateful for. I know, it's been a hard year, and we're sad about a lot of things that are different, about things that we can't do or didn't get to do, things that got canceled or changed. I am grumpy about some of those things too. I should have been in Arizona this week to see my best friends. But even if we're grumpy, we can still find something to be grateful for, something to thank God for. So I made a list of 50 things that I am thankful for this week in the order that they came to my brain. Heat, sweaters, kittens, friends, plants, snacks, sunshine, laughter, coffee, shoes, ginger snaps, tea, flannel sheets, giraffes, dogs, church, God, brains, hearts, pizza, crying, showers, running water, adventures, cheese, chocolate, clean laundry, the internet, phone calls, crayons, patience, trust, toast, creativity, experiments, clementines, masks, masks, books, teddy bears, jam, crafts, bees, voting, advent, grocery shopping, spam, yeah, the stuff in the can, having a home, peppermint, maps, like that one, and you. You get the idea. Even though I'm sad about how long we're going to have to keep dealing with the virus, there are still lots and lots of things to be thankful for. I would love for you to make a list. It wouldn't have to be 50 things on it, just a few would be okay but a list of things you're grateful for or thankful for even in this strange and unsettling year we've been having. May each and every one of us give thanks to God for life and love and know how to count our blessings. Amen. We pray enjoy this week for Sally Dickinson from Black Creek, whose mom moved to a new part of her care facility and is adjusting well to the changes for the flexibility, compassion, and care of our parish, for our amazing teachers and students and staff and parents, for time spent carefully with family and friends, for the faith and strength of those whose work allows us to live, for the relationships of support and connection that help, us, that help sustain us, and for these other joys you are celebrating. We pray in concern this week for Ruth Schinke from Trinity, who is having eye surgery this week. For Ruby Gretza from Cecil on the death of her friend Patty from ALS and complications with COVID. 
for Christopher Grundy, my friend, on the death of his father, Roy. For Mona Ashenbrenner from Trinity and her son, Lucas. For all those dealing with cancer, including Kathy, Brad, Rita, Bridget, and Cal. For all those who are dealing with health and other struggles, including Chip, Violet, B, Sandy, Bruce, Robin, and Emily. For all who have COVID, including several members of our parish and extended community, particularly Linda, former teacher of Lisa Raths from Black Creek, all those who are recovering from COVID-19, and all those who have had loved ones die from the virus. For all who are struggling with addiction and their mental health, for all the places where there are natural disasters, including fires, floods, earthquakes, droughts, and more. For teachers, aides, staff, and administrators making difficult decisions about education and the students and parents who have to adapt to ever-changing realities. For all of us as we wrestle with so many feelings, questions, and fears. For everyone who is struggling with the ongoing effects of the pandemic, the frustrations and cancellations and postponements, changes in routine, the uncertainty, and more. For Caitlin Kelly, missing from Shano since June. That the voices of those demanding human rights and justice might be heard, and that this might be a time of real and meaningful change for our country and the world towards true equality for all God's children, and for these other concerns that you are struggling with. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today with thanksgiving and hope for all the joys of our lives. We thank you for love, for friends and family, for community and for our congregations that provide us with support and encouragement as we journey through life. Fill us with patience and compassion as we live through these strange and challenging days. Remind us that our job is not to judge, but to pay attention to our own actions and behaviors, that together we might protect our health and the health of our communities. Help us remember what is truly important in our lives and in the life of the world. Help us support others, remember our dependence on one another, and advocate on behalf of the health and welfare of all your children and all creation. Be with and keep safe the soldiers, sailors, firefighters, police officers, first responders, emergency medical technicians, utility workers, garbage collectors, and transit drivers. Remind us of the work that farmers, farm workers, factory employees, truck drivers, postal workers, and delivery workers do for us and for the world. Remind us that the work of fighting this virus is not done and that the rise in cases is adding pressure to our medical professionals and facilities. Be with all those who care for others in hospitals, clinics, nursing and care facilities, and child care programs. Give them strength, courage, and all the supplies they need to safely do their work. Be with those who lead and make decisions about our collective health, creating and carrying out public policy. Bring your hope to all who are struggling with worry and anxiety and the ongoing effects of the virus. Be with those who felt and still feel isolated, with those who are overwhelmed, with those who are confused and scared, with those who are frustrated, and with those for whom this is a time of renewal. Be with our teachers, school staff, administration, parents and students as they live through these days, trying to find a way to balance the needs for education, mental and physical health, socialization, providing for families, and more. Help us in the midst of life's storms to be joyful. We give thanks for the beauty of creation, for health and strength returning, for the ways our communities and congregations gather to support one another in the face of everything we are dealing with and the incredible faith and flexibility of the people in our parish. 
Help us, O oh God, to be in solidarity with those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, particularly for Ruth as she has surgery this week, and for all who are dealing with the particular challenges of cancer and its treatments. We pray for all those who have had or still have COVID-19 and those who are dealing with its ongoing and long-term effects and those who have lost loved ones to the virus. We pray for the health of our communities and every community around the world. Be with all who are in need of your healing grace. Heal our bodies if that is possible, but surely, O oh God, help all our spirits be whole and one with you. Be with all, O oh God, who struggle with other problems, particularly Mona and Lucas, with broken and hurting relationships, with the joys and challenges of being in community, with the struggles of addiction, anxiety, and mental health. Comfort all those who mourn, O oh God, and be with all who are struggling with grief and loss, whether that grief is new or many years old. Be with Ruby as she remembers her friend Pat, and Christopher as he remembers his father. Bring comfort to all who grieve, reminding us of your presence and your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. Be with the family of Caitlin Kelly as they wait for news of her whereabouts. Be with all who are struggling in the midst of natural disasters, fires, floods, earthquakes, and more, and bring your peace to all creation. Be with all who are victims of sexism, racism, and all the isms that create hatred and discrimination. Be with all of us as we find a way to move forward together, to do our part in working to challenge and end those sins that cause us to be divided. Guide us and give us strength that we might open our hearts and minds and spirits to your presence, your power and your grace, O oh God. Help us that we might find the true peace and grace that can never be taken from us. These and all our prayers we entrust to God who knows us better than we know ourselves. For God created us, loves us, and claims us as God's very own. We pray all things with the words that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today, our special music, God of My Breathing, is a reminder that God is present in every part of who we are, and that through how we live, we bring honor and glory to God. From our friend and traveling psalmist Richard Bruxford Colligan, he wrote these words, set to the tune Slain, which you might know from Be, that, Be Now My Vision, as a reminder that God is never absent from us. God of my breathing and God of my heart, Spirit embodied in all human parts, Word that this body from head to the toes, Bring forth your glory in all that I Shoes on the pavement or 
Lord of his mind, God of the moment whose vision is time. All I remember and all I forget, all in your keeping, so this soul might rest. We come to the last of our three parables from Matthew's Gospel about what the kingdom of God is like. Reading from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by God, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the living of this scripture. For three weeks, we've heard Jesus teaching in parables. In these last days of his earthly life, in, he's in Jerusalem, teaching on the steps of the temple to crowds that grow in number every day. He knows this is the last time he will have the chance to teach them about God's incredible love and grace. The last chance to give them instructions for what their life should be like. So two weeks ago, we heard about the bridesmaids, some wise and others foolish, and the importance of paying attention. Because we never quite know when the kingdom of God will be revealed to us, will break into our lives. Then last week, we heard about the very rich man who entrusted his slaves with talents and how we can't bury or hide the gifts we have been given, but have to take them out into the world and allow them to multiply. This week, we have a story about sheep and goats and sorting between the two. It seems that the fullness of God's glory has come and the Son of Man is sitting on the throne of glory. 
gathered before him are all of the people of the earth, and it's time for sorting. Towards the right hand go the sheep, and towards the left hand go the goats, each into their nice, neat groups. And then the king addresses each group. First to the sheep, he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you cared for me. When I was in prison, you visited me. But the sheep are confused. They don't remember doing any of those things for Jesus himself, so they ask. And the king responds that when they did these things for the least of the members of his family, they did it for him. Then to the goats, the king says, you didn't take care of me. Offer me food or drink or clothe me or visit me. And the goats are likewise confused because they don't remember denying Jesus any care, ever refusing to help him. The king responds, whenever they didn't do those things, whenever they didn't care for the least of the members of his family, they refused to care for him. The sheep, for caring for others, are rewarded with the glories of the kingdom of heaven, and the goats, for ignoring the needs of others, are banished into the outer darkness. Of these three parables that we've heard, this one is probably the most straightforward the easiest to understand about how to live our lives. But there's also a cautious lesson in there too. I will confess that this is probably one of my favorite scriptures, perhaps because it's one of the first I remember my mama teaching me when I was small, or perhaps because it is so incredibly easy to put into action. If we want to be part of the work of the kingdom, of bringing about the realm of peace and grace and love and abundance for all creation, we just follow the steps that the sheep did. We do the things that they got praised for. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was sick, you took care of me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Six. Six easy things to do, a nice manageable list of tasks for our everyday living. Provide for people their basic needs for food and clothing and shelter and companionship and care. Offer to them just the same way you would offer to Jesus if he were the hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, imprisoned stranger in front of you. Simple, right? Well, it turns out it's not so simple because we are people full of all kinds of questions and doubts and worries. People, by our nature maybe, are also full of judgment, of trying to decide if someone is worthy of our help or if they'll use the resources we gave them for good things or if they'll squander them, if the help we offer them will be well used. Do they really need food from the pantry or clothes from the closet? Or are they just trying to get things for free? We have all asked ourselves that, myself included, been unable to see the image of Jesus in the person in front of us because we've wondered if they're sufficiently needy or worthy or something. We've all probably shied away from welcoming a stranger, wondering who they are when they don't look like us or talk like us or think like us. And in these days of COVID, we're all a little wary, a little hesitant to care for the sick in case we might get sick ourselves. And visiting people in prison causes all kinds of struggles for us because we wonder about how they ended up there, what they did to deserve it, and what might happen to us if we went into the prison to visit. It is part of who we are, those initial thoughts and judgments and questions and fears. But as disciples of Jesus, people who claim to follow on the path that he showed us, we're called to feel those first thoughts, recognize them, and move on to do the work that he set before us, to care for everyone in need as if they were Jesus himself. We're called to feed the hungry, those who struggle for literal food, but also those who are hungry for friends and community and hope. 
We're called to give drink to the thirsty, those who need actual clean water to drink, but also those who thirst for companionship and justice and peace. We're called to welcome the stranger, the people who are new to our communities and our lives, but also the people we've known for a long time who have lived through something challenging, a grief or a loss, a traumatic event, a physical or mental struggle, a joyful change of marriage or a new baby or a new job, and welcome the new person that they are becoming too. We're called to clothe the naked, literally the people who need clothes. And here in Wisconsin, the right clothes for the coming winter are important. But also clothe the people he, who need to know that love is real, that they can trust us with their joys and their struggles, that grace isn't a little prayer we say before we eat, but it's something that gives us strength for every day of our lives. We're called to care for the sick. Sometimes literally those who have physical illnesses by delivering food or running errands or driving them to the doctor, but also to care for those who are sick in mind and spirit, those who struggle with their mental health, which is no less real than a physical illness, or those who are sick with worry or grief or hopelessness or joblessness or fear or exhaustion or despair or who are overwhelmed by just everything in their lives and the life of the world. We are called to visit those who are in prison. Yes, actual prisons and jails. And to visit those who struggle with the prisons of poverty, injustice, mental illness, grief, isolation, and loneliness. Sometimes we do those things ourselves, personally working at the food pantry or making a prison visit or delivering a meal. And sometimes we support others who do those things, donating to the clothes closet or Meals on Wheels or sending books to my friend Will, who is a prison chaplain, so he can do his work. But through it all, we do these things for any child of the earth, any of God's children. Because we know that within them is the divine light, the image of God, the presence of Jesus. We reach out and we care for everyone because we know that in doing so, we care for Jesus himself. As much as this scripture is a simple set of things for us to do in order to follow Jesus, it also has a bit of caution for our lives of faith included in it as well. We are, as I said, prone to judgment. And oh, wouldn't we sometimes like to be the one sitting on the throne, sorting the sheep from the goats, deciding who is welcomed into the abundance of the kingdom and who is kicked into the place of despair where there is gnashing of teeth. Even if we don't admit it, all of us, at least a little bit, want to be the one who does that who separates the good from the bad, the faithful from the sinner, the sheep from the goats, the us from the them. But like it or not, it's God who does the sorting. It's God who sits on the throne and decides if our lives have followed in Jesus's footsteps, if what we have done is what he would have done, if we've reached out, if we have seen Jesus's face in the face of the hungry and the thirsty, the naked and the sick, the stranger and the imprisoned, or if we haven't. As much as I sometimes wonder what it would be like to be the queen of all things, I know that's not my job. I'm not the queen or the savior of the universe. I am a worker in God's field, someone who works towards a goal that isn't of my making, a goal God sets for me and for all of us, the goal of the kingdom where everyone, Absolutely everyone can eat until they are full and drink, <coughs> excuse me, and drink until they are happy, where everyone, absolutely everyone has love and security and community. As we end this year in the life cycle of the church, a year that hasn't been like any other, and we look forward to the weeks of Advent and the miracle of Christmas and the turning of the year, I pray we might all leave the judgment to God, and embrace the work before us, 
to see Jesus in the face of those around us in need, the needs we can easily identify and the ones that hide behind the disguises and illusions of being fine that we present to the world. And do our part to meet those needs for everyone as if they were Jesus himself. If we can even try. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> if we can even try, then the kingdom of God's promise will be real in this very place. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this time of worship. May we be thankful and grateful people who recognize your love and grace in every moment of our days. Guide us that we may continue the work of building a faithful community of your beloved children. Throughout this week and in all our days, help us that we might follow in the path that Jesus showed us, reaching out to those who are dismissed by the world, comforting those who are struggling, rejoicing with those who are celebrating, weeping with those who are grieving, and loving everyone as we find them, without conditions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For this Thanksgiving Sunday, we hear, as we close the traditional German hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, written in 1647 by Martin Rinkert, who served as Bishop of Eilenburg, Germany, during the Thirty Years' War. The hymn was translated into English in 1858 by Catherine Winkworth. It is a reminder to praise and thank God through all our days. It can be found in our New Century Hymnal at number 419. receive this benediction. May you know the strength of our congregations that provide us with unity, community, and strength through all our days. May you know God's grace and love are real and powerful, moving in your life today and every day. And may you know
the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and may they bring you courage, peace, and hope. Amen.